I'm Jim W6LG for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room here on Wolf Mountain. In the last episode, we used some bird watt meters to, to show that the bird meter is highly accurate, as was the N8LP with a steady carrier where you're putting out uh, uh, like an FM signal where it's just the same level the whole time. When I switched to SSB, where the powers up and down could be zero, could be 100 watts, could be, as we found out, 120 watts, um, the bird watt meter that did not have a peak reading device in it was woefully inadequate. Uh, it was reading 20, 25 watts when the output was 120, so it wasn't even close. The reason for showing that was a couple of things. One, I wanted to show that when a transceiver is keyed, even though you've tuned something at its full power from the transceiver, in the SSB mode, it may put out a lot more. And because of that, you can overdrive a linear amplifier to the point where there is splatter. Um, also, that uh, devices that don't read peak or don't have some kind of circuit to do peak reading um, on SSB are pretty much useless. Many meters in linear amplifiers like the plate current meter, plate um, uh, grid current, screen current, those kinds of things, they're not peak reading. So what you're seeing on the meter is not a good representation of really what's going on. So you may think that, well, I'm only driving the linear to, uh, to half its maximum current, when in fact you're exceeding its maximum current by a lot. Um, as a part of this project, I've decided to make a, a, a watt meter and I've put one together very quickly. I took a, um, and I, I was going to use this, this box, which is an old rotator control. It's got a beautiful meter in it, but um, I ended up using this device that I built some time ago. It's really simple, um, and this is going to be my pickup coil. Uh, I took a toroid off of a power supply board uh, like this one, and uh, stuck it in there, put one into the center pin of the BNC, the other into ground. Um, what kind of mix is it? I have no idea. Uh, how many turns? Uh, it's about 10 or 12. Uh, as it turns out, it's plenty. It works fine. Um, I haven't calibrated it yet, but it's not, uh, it's not that bad. And so for less than 10 bucks, I've built uh, a fairly decent watt meter. I'm going to either use a jumper cable to connect the two, or I can just mount it on top. Depends on, on how things work out. I'm going to take this into another room uh, and drive an amplifier, uh, get an SDR receiver going, and we're going to look at what happens to an amplifier when it's overdriven, where it looks like it's not, but in fact the peak current, uh, because of the peak wattage from the um, transceiver, is higher than a person might expect or what they're reading from the meter, um, the signal starts to broaden out and it can broaden out to dramatically. That shortens the life of the tubes um, or tube and uh, causes distortion and on the scope and on the band it's uh, it's pretty evident. Uh, it's not pretty. All right, going to break this down, go set it up, we'll see what happens. Um, back in a couple of minutes. All right, here we go. I've got a lot of noise, so I'll try to talk over the noise. So let's first, I'm going to use a two-tone oscillator in the K3 uh, to generate a signal. It's a little easier to uh, to look at the uh, at the bandwidth that way. So let's drive the amp. Um, yeah, this is grid current, play current. That's going to be power out. All right, that's uh, 450 watts, and I've got uh, about 100 mils of grid current, almost 400 mils of plate current, about 125. Let's run the drive up, and I'm going to watch the grid current. That's the bottom meter. Now watch the grid current now. It's 200 mils. The plate current stayed about the same. That's not good for the tube. Now look at the bandwidth on the scope. It's a lot wider than it was because linear is not linear. You can see those lines way out to the side. Now let's increase the loading control and peak the amplifier for its 
maximum output and see what happens to the scope. So here we go. All right, now look at the scope and you can see it's quite a bit, it's near, not nearly as wide as it was. That's uh, 700 watts. The uh, grid current's 100 mils, plate current uh, about 450. So there is about a about a four to one ratio. Okay, let's stop here and review uh, two frames of video that I captured just to show what the difference is between roughly 100 mils of grid current and 200 mils of grid current and what that does to the width of the signal. So. In the first instance, I've tuned up the amp amplifier so that it has about 125 mils of grid current and just shy of 500 mils of play current. And let's, it's a bit blurry, but let's look at this frame. And you can see that uh, here's the main body of the signal. Uh, there's a, not a lot going on either side of that. Now the SDR receiver is literally on top of the transmitter, so at a greater distance these spikes probably wouldn't appear, but it's not terrible in, uh, as to what it is right now. Now the next step is to increase the drive so that there's 200 mils of grid current. And what does that do to the signal? And I've left, so now I've got 200 mils of grid current 400 mils of plate current. Well, and in case you're wondering how that would happen, um, the, you're working somebody and you increase the drive or you increase the mic gain so that you're putting more power into the linear amplifier. And here's, what's, here's what happens to the signal. There's just all kinds of garbage each side of the main signal. And just kind of switch back and forth. This is 200 mils. That's 100 mil. I know that I know it's maybe hard to see it. So th the only difference is, in this case, I kept the drive at 100 mils. The amplifier is actually tuned up for more than 500 mils of play current. So here's the upshot of what I'm uh, trying to convey. Let's say that, and this is what I hear from a lot of guys, let's say that you either are restricted to 400 watts or that's what you want to run. And the amplifier is capable of the 400 watts and, and perhaps more. And a lot of guys will tune the amplifier to 400 watts output and go on the air. And that's a mistake. It's a mistake because of what you see in the second picture. Uh, while well, you think that uh, the transceiver is putting, putting out enough to drive the amplifier to 400 watts, in fact, it's probably pushing it even further. And if the amplifier is tuned only for 400 mils in this case, um, going beyond that causes a bunch of distortion. So how do you run 400 watts on an amplifier that can do a kilowatt? Well, it's easy. Tune the, always tune the amplifier for max out. Always. High voltage, step your drive up until you get to max, whatever the maximum power is for that amplifier and then reduce the drive, not by adjusting the mic gain, but by adjusting the output power of the transceiver so that the grid current and plate current still maintain that recommended ratio in the instruction book. If you've found this interesting or if you have a comment, please post it below. I think this will generate a lot of comments. Uh, I know it's blurry and kind of hard to see, but that's the best I could do. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. I'm trying to build the uh, uh, number of subscribers to, I'd like to get to a, a much larger number if I can over the next year. Thanks for watching. I'm Jim, W6LG for Ham Radio Basics. See you the next time, 7-3.